Uh, guys, cheers. All right, cheers. 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 Oh, oh no. I forget to look in the eyes. Recording this live on the middle of a, or in the middle of a photo trip. We're in Alberta, Canada. We've been slogging it through the deep snow and and hiking around on frozen ice, and we're all cold. And I'm tired. These guys aren't nearly as tired as me, which doesn't seem quite as fair. But uh, yeah, I, I disagree. I'm quite tired. I'm on the. I've got the photographer's jet lag, which is good. So True. when you, when you fly west then you, you're springing out of bed at four in the morning because in the UK that would be like midday. You were like surprisingly spry when you showed up though. Like yeah. you, you seemed uh, ready I, to go. It was just excitement. Yeah. Yeah. But Man. then as soon as 8 p.m. comes around, I'm just zonked. Yeah. So Gavin called us all up. Well, he texted us all up and invited, <laughs> invited us up here. And the conditions have just been amazing up here in the Canadian Rockies and it's awesome. So you're glad you came? Yes, it's official. I'm, I'm glad that I came. You're glad you came. You're glad you came. Well, that's debatable. We still have a few days left. <laughs> yeah, it, could go, it could go downhill. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you all came. It's been a blast yeah, absolutely. to share some of my favorite locations with you guys. Yeah. It was very last minute for me. Like, after speaking to you, 24 hours later, I booked the flight, and then a further 36 hours after booking it, I was on the plane. It was it was the the most last minute trip I've ever done, um, and I was a bit panicking, thinking I forgot something or not booked something. Turns out you need a visa to come to Canada. Didn't know that, so got myself an electronic visa waiver thing, and um, yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so we our sunrises so far have been more. Uh, fruitful, I guess, than our sunsets. Is that pretty typical? I'd say that is pretty typical. I think in all my time shooting in the Rockies, sunrise has always been more fruitful than sunset. Yeah, most definitely, because because the the main valley, um, most of the peaks face uh, east, or the ones that you usually photograph. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can get nice sun sunsets as well, but generally speaking, the, I think the sunrises are much yeah. better here for I sure. Agree. Yeah. But yeah. come on. We have been faffing on a bit at sunset. Yeah. A few indecisions, a few late late. lunches, a few car accidents. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought we, I thought we were going to ease into no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so what normally happens is we have lunch and then we all crash and we don't want to go and shoot. But today we had lunch. No, today Nick literally crashed. <laughs> literally crashed. Right he gave me a right Gavin. good <laughs> Because shunt. Gavin was rude enough to come to a complete <laughs> stop at a stop sign. Actually, I'm pretty sure, uh, maybe I'm remembering this wrong, incorrectly, but it seemed like you stopped and then you started to take off and then you stopped again and that's what screwed me no, up. No, because I own a driver's license, you see. <laughs> I passed my test and I would never do such a thing. Yeah. Besides, there was some big truck in front of me, and there's nowhere I could have gone. It's, right. it, yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. No matter I don't know. What I, I was driving with Nick. I don't remember any big truck. I just remember <laughs> empty space. Right. So. Yeah, and like <coughs> a slow motion, like 20 foot slide. <laughs> like I had right. to, I had time to like honk at you four I times, and all you did was like hmm? <laughs> and turn around and look at me. Exaggeration may be in order right, right now. <laughs> I, I believe it was more like a two second. Maybe like an eight foot slide. And since then, my neck is really sore. Yeah, what about yeah, you, Tom? Yeah. I'm getting shooting pains down my back. Yeah. I can't release any content this week, so I've lost earnings. I've lost oh. my sponsorship from Squarespace. You know, I was really banking on this trip for my calendar next year, so yeah. obviously that's gone. So, yeah, I'll be uh, speaking yeah. to my solicitor. Things are just tough home. all over, I guess. I smell a lawsuit right now. <laughs> I smell it. I don't know. I think Gavin was distracted. I think he was quaffing his hair at the time in his mirror. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. He just well, wasn't paying course. attention. Yeah. <laughs> course yeah, well, what about the damage to my brush guard? Was there even a scratch on your rhubarb? I think it, it kind of messed up the rubber coating <laughs> on the S. Like, like you said earlier, there is definitely a, a winner and a loser when, what is it, a Chevy? Yeah, America. When, when a Chevy hits a fragile BMW. <laughs> The BMW does not come off too well. No, no, definitely. But you have paid for two breakfasts for the whole group without even telling us. So sneaky. Just as a Nick Page special. Yeah. 
Oh, hey guys, I'm uh, just gonna go and uh, walk over here. Yeah, over here by the, the register, we'll see it. My, my goal is always to get you guys, to get on your good side, and then just, and then you know, crash into and the then just of crash into you that way. Yeah. It keeps the lawsuits at a minimum. <laughs> so, what is our plan for tomorrow? What well, we, we need to check the weather, but I remember you saying that you might drive home tomorrow. Yes. Oh, so, that, is that going to have any influence on where we shoot? If you're thinking that you need to then leave, does that mean you're? No, it doesn't change anything for me. Like I'm willing, I'm willing to shoot whatever because the drive is a big long drive is a big long drive. It doesn't matter whether I started at eight or at ten. No, but it does matter if you start it an hour and a half in the opposite direction that you want to be driving home. Oh yeah, Yeah. I guess. And maybe two hours plus three hours of shooting, (laughs) and then two hours just to get back to where you started. Three hours of crying, trying to snowshoe but through the. You yeah. have to remember why you're here in the first place. I always think that when I go on a trip yeah. and I don't feel like shooting, maybe I want to go in the hot tub or go for swim. <laughs> hot tub. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I oh, just have a rest, you know, but you ultimately have to remember why you're here. It's like, no, 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 let's just get out and shoot. Right. And then you never regret it, ever. You can recover when you get home. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But having seen your driving, perhaps <laughs> you don't want to be driving tired. <laughs> Right. The question, the way you've got to look at it is, it, it, would you regret it if we shot somewhere more convenient and it was okay? Um, you might regret that. If you if you go north two hours and you get an awesome sunrise, there's no, you know, in, in a week's time or two weeks' time, you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to be lying on your deathbed thinking, God, I really regret driving that extra two hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, if you look at the bigger picture, yeah, you know, absolutely. Where are we going to go two hours from here? Columbia, Columbia, Columbia ice, fields? ice fields, yeah, maybe Panther Falls. But let's just check weather. So Lake Louise weather for what tomorrow. What are you using there, Gavin? Uh, this is weather.com, so it's absolute shite. Right. <laughs> I use um, clear outside, which looks like a minefield, mm. and you don't really get any fancy graphics. Let's compare that. You, you right. dial that up. Well, you get a ton of information, which you can then, when you learn it, you can interpret. And honestly, it's fantastic. I like I'm, how it mentions like whether it's low cloud or high, yeah. high yeah. cloud. I'm gonna yeah, look the for, different uh, elevations of cloud. Which that is so useful. I'm looking at Bow Lake, which is, I don't know, it's kind of in the right direction, isn't yeah. it? So this is what I have for Bow Lake sunrise tomorrow morning. At 8.30ish. Okay, so yeah, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning we have 37% mid cloud. Mm, I think for the Rockies that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not going to snuff out the mountains and that could interact with the mountains. And how cold is it going to be? Well, minus 21. Ooh. Ooh. Is that, that, with, that is with, Celsius. That is, is that with wind yeah. chill or without? No, because it feels like minus 21. And the wind is three mile an hour, you know, negligible wind. Oh. So there's no wind, it's going to be crisp, it's going to be cold. If we can about? find open water, we're going to get mist, surely. So what we might want to do then is go to where we were this afternoon with the river, with that S-curve. I think that Just might be down better. from Kefren slash Shefren, or however you pronounce it, up from Bow Lake. Oh, right, so not where we were this morning, but a bit further down further the road. Further down, where we oh. went after that. And that's not too far for Nick. Yeah. And coming back. Yeah. And then we have a solid plan. Oh, I'm and, up for it. And that's Bow Lake region, so we're going to get this weather. Does we that could, work for we, you? We could go to Waterfowl Lake after as well. It's right there, yeah, Sheffron. We could do Sheffron, and then I don't know the names of those peaks just down from it, but yeah, that's that's perfect. And like he says, oh, it's... Oh, hang on. Excuse me. 8 o'clock, 30, <laughs> 8 o'clock, 37% mid-cloud, nothing else. 9 o'clock, 13% mid-cloud, 95 high-cloud. Oh. oh, brilliant! But so if, that, those... if that shifts an hour, that could catch. Yeah. You so know, the you... the general rule is high clouds catch light and color. Yeah. And mm. mid clouds can catch some of the later color, more the oranges yeah, like and. Yellows. High cloud doesn't just build in in, a, in an hour. It, it doesn't just come out of nowhere. So we, you know, that might come in a bit earlier and start to develop, and then yeah. we might get some <clears throat> superb light. But this looks like the best forecast we've had so far. So are we agreed then. We're going to head up the Icefields Parkway. Does that work for you, Adam? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, sounds sounds good to me. And I do. I do. Not, <laughs> I do not mind the extra drive. And the cool thing is, we've kind of scouted out some stuff no, no, up that way. Are we sure we're okay with Nick driving? Well, as long <laughs> yeah, as he's yeah. in front of me. Is Adam yeah. driving? <laughs> <laughs> Well, just don't stop in front of me, man. Are those like um, 
Nürburgring tyres that you must have like they're like slick tyres for doing donuts and yeah. drifting yeah exactly not good for snow then oh we could just go in my car Nick uh, that's an experience I highly recommend <laughs> <laughs> can I ride in the bed <laughs> so uh, with the trip so far what would you say have you, have you got a good yield of images none of the images have any relevance whatsoever all that I came here for was to watch Adam Gibbs face plant in the snow <laughs> like he did yesterday morning. That, that's all I care about. It was the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that was, it was pretty glorious. Full submersion. <laughs> that was, was the, that was was the best part, <laughs> is that he just completely disappeared under the snow. Face, you, you see the arms face. and then just to full immersion. It's like, this is the thing with Adam, right? Is, if you watch his, his videos, you, you're not entirely sure just how much of a comedy genius he really is. <laughs> like, th this guy is comedy gold that I, I learn every time we do a video. It's like I walk away with, like, oh, my God, that, that guy. He's, he's going to win some awards, I think. And he's just in, so enthused about everything. That's what I love. Yeah, right. oh, he's yeah. so yeah, excited me. about that's everything. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm in, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm inspired. I was stood at, you know, at a location this morning. <coughs> couldn't see an image. Wanted to go home. Adam just rocked up. Changed the whole mood. It was just excitement on another level. On another level. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for the, the yeah, charcoal. Right. Yeah. Is that what we're talking oh, about? Yeah. The charcoal. So, trees. yeah, me and Adam decided that we wanted something a bit more subdued, something less epic. And there's these beautiful, well, they're not beautiful, actually, it's quite devastating. There's been huge forest fires, but you have all of these trees just, just completely burnt, so like matchsticks, like tinder. And I thought that contrasted against the white snow would be quite interesting. Adam agreed, but. Um, Gavin, what were your thoughts on the uh, burnt trees? I, I could not possibly have been less interested <laughs> in vertical charcoal sticks in snow. So what, it, what is it that drew you to that? Like, why, why did you want to photograph those burnt trees so much? Adam? I think, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more about, um, uh, it's more about the, the art of, of looking for composition and, and something more meaningful than just going for the obvious. I mean, that's what I like about photography is the challenge of looking for something that you might not otherwise look at otherwise. Yeah. Like mountains and street. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I love that stuff, but I love the challenge of looking into areas that are kind of chaotic and and half the time, you know, I mean, 90% of the time you don't come away with anything, but it's the... And then when you do find something, you know, I get quite excited about it. And yeah. So when because Gavin you feel started, like you've earned it. Yeah. Right. So when Gavin started shouting, you know, we're kind of in the midst of just kind of tweaking and composition. And then I hear this, are you guys coming? Are you guys coming? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get to the next shoot, man. It's because the light was very fair, though, The next shoot after the matchsticks it was, was phenomenal. No, it, it was very good, yes. Very I good. must admit. Yeah, it was a great location. It shot upon the matchsticks from a great, great height. So do you guys feel like you got any good shots from that up there? Yeah. Oh, from up there. <sighs> no, we didn't have enough time. Uh, I, I didn't have enough time. You, we gave you an hour. Yeah. It took us well, well, took, took most of the time slogging up there. So. Well, maybe you shouldn't walk so far. <laughs> well, but that's where the best stuff was. <laughs> but I think um, the, the, the question that you asked earlier, out of all of the shots that I've taken myself and that I've seen of everybody else's so far, and, and relating to the point you just made about, about picking a detail out of chaos, yeah. is Adam's shot yesterday that he sent to us all that he, he picked out of Abraham Lake. So we all went to Abraham Lake, and you go there to shoot the ice bubbles and the ice cracks, and we, we got good light, didn't we? We got nice color, and we all, we all got those really good shots, but not a single one of us except Adam uh, looked for that obscure, random detail, and he got this shot of these this one tree amidst absolute chaos that I kind of hate you a little bit. Yeah, I was a bit, I saw it, and my, I'll be honest, my heart sank. Yeah. It was such a good image. The light was perfect. The, the, the uh, blurred out background and background thrown out of focus, but perfectly uniform so you could just see the shapes of the trees the vertical trees yeah. coming up out of focus and then the light and the the even distribution of the branches either side of the central trunk yeah. mm -hmm. very Super, juicy yeah. yeah and the thing is like us three you know me gavin and thomas we ended up with 
probably fairly similar images that evening, you came away with the most original. Right. Nobody else would well, have thought to just like walk off into the Abraham forest. Lake. Let's yeah. go to Abraham Lake and then just wander <laughs> off into the forest. <laughs> well, that, to be, and, and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass deliberately because you never blow smoke up mine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think Adam's been at this probably longer than any of us, right? So, and I think there's a certain eye that you develop with maturity yeah. and practice and being out in the field and going through phases of artistry in your photography where you know you maybe you first start out with super wide angle lens or whatever but you've you've got that you're a veteran so you've got that that um, photography vocabulary under your belt yeah you like that don't you? Yeah, yeah. deep I can be eloquent let's talk about Nick's crash again <laughs> bring, it yeah, let's yeah. bring it back to that right. let's bring it back no bring you, that's bring a good point a very yeah. very good point yeah I, yeah I was, oh, my hat my 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 hat's getting really it's getting tight. Yeah. It's getting yeah. really, starting to get really it's tight. Really, it's starting to pinch. <clears throat> I'm going to take it off. I can't tell if you're blushing or if it's frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so negative 21 tomorrow. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's so, so dry out here. It, you, when, you, when you've got good clothing and there's no wind, you don't, you don't feel it really. It's yeah. the wind that's miserable. Yeah, yeah and no actually, when we've been like hiking through the snow we've actually been shedding layers because we're getting so hot yeah. so what problems has the cold temperatures caused it's uh, caused me a few I'll yeah be honest. absolutely but i dropped my camera today because of the blooming cold weather and that yeah. sounds daft yeah. but legit i was uh, the the head of my tripod uh, froze solid mm -hmm. so when i put the tri uh, the camera on the tripod and lock it it doesn't it doesn't lock properly because there's ice in there that I can't see. So I think the camera's locked and it's not, and then and it just then falls off. But well, on the plus side, it fell into three foot of snow. So yeah. no, no harm, no foul. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's got that cannon weather ceiling. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah and I guess the, the other downside is, you know, people who don't know how to drive in snow and ice, <laughs> yeah. they will crash into you. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. never yeah. going to that happen. happen. <laughs> yeah, but I have the same tripod issues. Another thing is, if you leave your tripod in the car it overnight, seasons. when you go to open it for that first time, Legs are all locked. I was in thinking about this. I had this issue today. My my legs locked up, and I thought maybe I should just bring a small bottle of antifreeze. Would that is that worth carrying in the winter? I, well, it's poisonous, though, right? Well, yeah, but you're not spraying in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, but if it's on your hands. But what if you do oh, spray? Yeah, it? that's you're a like, fair point. You know, you start yeah. picking Adam's nose. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, rub your eyes. What about the... windshield uh, stuff? I mean, I guess that's the maybe. same. I think probably the best thing to do is to take it in into yeah, the hotel room, and then. You know, but the thing is, extend I'm, it fully, let well, it dry out overnight. If you're out all day, so you get snow on your tripod, then your warm hands unlock the tripod, and then that bit of snow melts, and then you close it again. And it's yeah. easily, it's a common problem. The best thing to do is when you close your tripod, leave a couple of inches between the locks, and then when you come to like open it up again, you have some purchase. Yeah, exactly. I mean, my, my tripod's so old that it's, I, I just leave it open, like, fully extended, because otherwise I just can't, yeah. I can't get it you get, it's, it's a lot easier to, like, break that ice by, you know, jamming it down into the ground, then, it, then it'll then it break free, yeah. but it's a lot harder to, like, pull it out and stretch it out if it's frozen mm. closed, so. And, and the ball head that I have, um, I mean, it's, I've had it for a long time, it's a good ball head, but it's just all seized up. I can't even get my camera off half the time. It's really frustrating. Yeah. But, yeah. you know. That's what's happening to me. I've had my ball head about three years. It's going. I've been saying this for a few months, but is it's it, going. Let me guess. Is it a Manfrotto? Yeah. <laughs> oh. There's a shocker. Yeah. Well, I've, had mine for, I've, had, I've had mine for about almost 20 years. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. See, that's good. Mine have had three years, and it is every time I use it, there's a risk that it's going to break my camera. Because I can't get that's the camera off. That's encouraging. I have to, uh, I have to fight with no, it to get the rubbish. camera off. And then when I put it on, I'm never 100% sure that it's locked on. It's got to go. I'm just lazy. Yeah. I haven't bought a new one, but I, I will. What, what about cameras? Cameras held up well? Oh, yeah. Uh, but what I've been doing um, is I'll keep my batteries, every battery, so GoPro batteries, vlogging camera batteries, main camera batteries, all in a pouch with a hand warmer in the pouch. And oh, then nice. that pouch goes in my inside jacket pocket. And... I'm golden for batteries. That, that's Never smart. Have to worry that's about genius, it. actually. You have to do that. It you is keep, genius. You keep your batteries in your bag, just like your bottle of water, they'll freeze and then they'll be useless. Yeah, so a funny story about batteries is I showed up with one, <laughs> one between both cameras. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I left, my, was, what had happened was I had charged all my batteries. I left my battery pouch next to my charging station and then drove away. 
And so luckily we got up here and there was a camera store within like 20 miles and I was able to just go to the camera store and, and uh, buy a couple batteries. And that's never the case. So lucky that I was able to do that. What's the furthest distance you've ever driven and then realized, oh God, I forgot an essential piece of gear and then driven back to get it because you knew it was that Ooh, vital. And then driven back. I th I, mine was like two and a half hours. And I was going to shoot a waterfall, forgot my polarizer. You, you, you have to have a polarizer for waterfall. Oh, yeah, you? absolutely. Drove all the way back. Oh, I wouldn't have bothered with that. No, I've I never, was just I've left never done I once, when I was going to China, I had made it as far as the Columbia River Gorge and then realized I forgot my backup camera. And then I had Annalise actually drive all the way to the gorge. At that time, it was about a three and a half hour drive to bring me my backup oh, camera. Wow. I went to uh, Switzerland, four days in Switzerland, hiking, photography, and within that four days must have shot enough vlog material for four videos, one video per day. So, but I hadn't, don't have my laptop because I'm hiking, right? So I've got this uh, camera with a memory card on it, full, full of material. And uh, I landed at the airport, middle of the night, absolutely just knackered. Yeah. And left, as I was sat, by the baggage carousel waiting for my luggage, I had my camera in a little gift bag with a chocolate bar that I bought duty free. Popped that down on the table next to the chair, saw my bag, went and got my bag, drove home, it's about 20 minutes, half an hour to home, got in bed about one or oh, two in the morning, no. lying in bed and thought, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it just dawned on me, I was like, what? Got up, drove back to the airport. By now it's half two in the morning. I'm bringing all my material, all this trip for nothing. Uh, I, mean, I had the images, but uh, I wanted the vlog material. And went to the airport. And I thought, no one's, you know, it's going to be nice and quiet. They, they'll help me out. Turned out another flight had just landed that had been diverted. So you've got 200 passengers all going mad, needing hotels and transportation. So the airport was in chaos. Nobody cared about my camera. So the only way I could get them to care about my camera was to say, well, then someone must have stolen it. So I had to file a police report with the police at the airport. And then they checked the CCTV and they saw that a member of staff took it to lost property. But nobody cared. Nobody wanted until, to help until I said, right, well, I've got no choice. It's obviously been stolen. I need to file a police report. And then it becomes like official yeah. and they have to deal with it. Um, so I got it back at 7 a.m. the next, well, the same day. So I got like four hours sleep and got a text off the police officer at seven in the morning saying we found your bag. I was oh. Like, oh. So yeah. Oh, that's, that's terrible. terrible. That is awful. So this year, there's been lots of talk about like multiple uh, memory uh, memory card slots. Are you guys like shooting on multiple card slots when you I come have, on a trip like this? Yeah, I have two. I have two cards in, and would not do it any other way. Um, but it's quite hypocritical, really, because my my five D four has two cards always. Um, but my vlogging camera only has one card slot. But I'm backing up every single day. Yeah. Um, but then I don't see my video footage as being as important as my stills. Because if I've got the still images, I can still go and tell a story about how I took those images. And I've got the GoPro, which always has a bit of extra footage on. But I've had a memory card fail in the past three weeks. It does happen. Oh, wow. Just, it was just on my 5D, uh, my, my vlogging camera. It just come up with some weird error and told me to format the card. Luckily, it had been backed up. Formatted the card. Well, I didn't even format the card. I just made sure that everything was off the card, which it already was, and now threw the card in the bin. Because yeah, once just, they start to fail, they're no longer trustworthy. Oh, yeah. well, what about I've, you, Adam? I, um, yeah, I back up all my images on dual cards. Yeah. Um, I've never had a problem with a card, though. Yeah, I think it's not a bad idea, for sure, especially if you're going to go away on a, on a trip like this, yeah. you know, where... You know, if you lose your images, then it's kind of it, a drag. It hurts. It hurts a little <laughs> extra. If you go but I don't the further from home you go, it hurts a little extra. I don't know if it's a deal home. breaker, though. I mean, when we used to shoot film, I mean, you didn't have dual film slots. You know. <laughs> but you did exactly. shoot doubles, though. Uh, time. Yeah, but usually it was um, due to uh, processing problems, you know. Oh, I suppose, yeah. They'd screw up your processing or they get scratch slides. or Because actually there was a number of times that happened to me where whatever the machine they were using, it would, it would just scratch all the film, and of course it's useless, oh. right? Because you have this big scratch oh. going right through it. Because you couldn't, you couldn't scan it, because there was no, right. no such thing as a scanner. Uh, content aware, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> no? Well, now. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, what about you, Gavin? The, the worst I ever had, I mean, I don't, I don't shoot on uh, 
a camera with dual slots. But I do remember the, the biggest disaster I ever had was three weeks of shooting in Thailand. And I had, I had magic moments where you, you could never go back and shoot them again, you know, with people in them. You know, it's like a, a, a real precious moment. And everything was perfect. It was fine in the camera. But it was back in the days when you used to shoot in compact flash. And I had a laptop, but the laptop didn't have a compact flash slot. So you had to have one of those adapters which you plugged in via USB. Anyway, I plugged it in. The whole thing shit the bed. Everything was gone. Totally wiped. No. Nothing left. Yeah, I was I was a bit choked. Dude, that hurts. So I went back a few times. <laughs> what about photography mistakes or vlog? You're Gavin. You're quite new to YouTube, so you won't have made any mistakes yet. But <laughs> not, a single, oh yeah, right. not a single mistake. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are veteran. Well, you're a veteran. Not, not and, quite. And then, and then Nick is is the second most experienced in that. And like, I have no clue what. I don't I'm make doing. any mistakes because I don't do any video. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't know, not just vlogging mistakes, but photography mistakes. Like, I've made some, well, like, forgetting battery. I like, Nick, you forgot your batteries on this trip. I've yep. done that before, but not been able to rectify it or not charge my batteries or or being so self-confident that, you know, mm. going to shoot an image, just shoot one shot, go, yeah, nailed it, get home, and it's out of focus. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. That is the only mistake I, I've made recently in the last few years is focus. And if you mess that up, you're screwed. But if you, if you, I mean, I guess if something's totally overexposed and the highlights are blown, you, it's gone, right? I have a confession. Oh yeah. Oh, what well, if you don't? On this trip. No. Let me take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> First morning, like when we got that nice sunrise. At least on on the camera, I blew my highlights. <gasps> and the reason I blew my highlights is because I didn't have my histogram up. And I was just trusting what I was seeing on the camera. I thought I was seeing all kinds See, of detail I that never, I just never use wasn't. a histogram. <clears throat> and the problem is, I'm so used to the Canon world where you automatically get those blinkies, right? Yeah. But you only get those blinkies on the Sony preview if you like change your display while you're while you're reviewing your image. You hit up, and then then it blinks whatever yeah. is. And I didn't do that. I was so confident, oh, operating Nick, confidently, Nick, and Nick, I blew Nick. some highlights. Luckily, I'm just awesome in Photoshop, so I'm just gonna take a later, later sunrise shot, and now hopefully they're not as far gone, because you know you're only looking at that JPEG preview, so I'm hoping that those are recoverable, yeah. but I'm not sure that they are.